Have you ever felt like money is getting more and more useless? If you did, then you're absolutely right. Money isn't currency. Currency loses its value, but not money. Real money. The monetary system is one giant octopus with so many parts that most people fail to fully grasp the length and breadth of what moves the economy. But behind the seemingly complex system is a deception that has kept the ordinary person like you in the dark about what money truly is. Why we experience market crashes and recessions, have to bail out big banks and corporations, how the basic misunderstanding of money and how it works can keep you at the bottom forever. Join us in this video series as we lay bare the secrets of the monetary systems we have in our modern economy, their origins and why Thomas Jefferson would hate to see what has become of today's economy. Anytime you step out to make a purchase, you do so with the majority of people call money, but that isn't actual money. The truth is that no one actually deals with real money anymore. If no one has used real money all this while, what have we been using that we call money? Your greatest asset is not money. Your greatest assets are time and freedom. You can do almost anything with time and freedom, including building wealth. Now, wealth is not money. This video will show you the difference between money and currency and how you can begin to build wealth for yourself. The greatest mistake that you can make on the brink of recession is not to be educated about money and how it works. Money is the medium through which we all trade our time and freedom. 62.5% of Americans are playing in the labor market, which means they're trading their time and freedom for money by working for another person. This has dropped, but it paints the picture that the average American sacrifices their freedom and time on average 40 hours weekly to make a living. If you suddenly had no freedom to say you found yourself in prison, you would no longer be able to work and if you started a business and got busy, you would no longer be useful to your current employer because you no longer have enough hours in the day to trade for their money. Most people have been raised to believe that the currency is real money, so they willingly trade their real assets with just time and freedom to get currency, luring them away from real money in a rabbit hole that has many Americans burned out. That is why you must educate yourself if you want to escape the rat race, build real wealth, and get into the winning side of the wealth transfer that is about to happen. The past 10 years have been the greatest times to be alive with massive wealth transfers. The next decade is going to be even much more crazier. What are money and currency? The global financial system is complex and many need help understanding the difference between money and currency. Understanding this distinction is crucial to making informed decisions about wealth management. Money is a trading tool that stores the economic energy of an individual's time and freedom, while currencies are simply pieces of paper that represent a value assigned by the government. Think of currency as chits you use to collect and redeem time and freedom which you already have as a human being. Fiat currency is particularly concerning as it is not backed by any physical asset and is based solely on confidence in the government. This system inherently is unstable as seen in the 2008 financial crisis and the ongoing quantitative easing policy adapted by many governments. Origins of Money and Currency the origins of money can be traced back to ancient civilizations where people used a barting system to exchange goods and services. As societies became more complex and trade increased, a more standardized system of exchange was needed. This led to the creation of coins made of precious metals like gold and silver, which had inherent value and could easily be traded. Over time, governments began to issue their own coins, which became the first form of currency. Later, paper money was introduced, which was backed by the government's promise to redeem it for a fixed amount of precious metals. 
However, as economies grew and trade became more globalized, this system became impractical, leading to the rise of fiat currency. Fiat currency is not actually backed by any physical commodity, but instead supported by the government's power to regulate its value and control its supply. This system has been in place for decades, but has drawbacks, as we've seen with the recent global economic crisis. Governments do not like gold and silver because they impose restraint and accountability on the financial system. Rising prices are a symptom of an expanding currency supply, and gold and silver always account for this expansion. Understanding the distinction between money and currency is essential for those who wish to protect their wealth and ensure financial stability. By setting our minds free of economic voodoo and changing our context, we can take steps towards securing our financial futures. Printing money otherwise cloaked under qualitative easing couldn't be possible in an old and silver system. Why print more money? Quantitative easing is a process by which a government creates new money to inject into the economy to stimulate growth. However, this policy often leads to inflation, and global food prices have historically increased during periods of quantitative easing. This has created a humanitarian disaster for the 2 billion people who live on less than $2 a day, as they become increasingly hungry and may even overthrow their governments. The French Revolution together with the Arab Spring are examples of high food prices that can create a tipping point for social unrest. While a runaway inflation is pushing for the most productive members of society, it can also create opportunities for wealth transfer. Gold and silver have always been reliable store of value and have historically increased in price when currency became debased. The rush back to these precious metals can cause their values to meet or exceed the value of all the currency in circulation. This is happening globally for the first time in history making it the greatest wealth transfer opportunity in history. The hidden secrets of money are not so hidden after all. By understanding the distinction between money and currency, we can make informed decisions about our wealth management. Fiat currency is inherently unstable and can lead to inflation, creating social unrest and humanitarian crisis for the world's poorest people. However, the rush back to gold and silver presents a unique wealth transfer opportunity on a global scale. Governments may not like this, but it is necessary for a more stable financial system. By taking the first step towards changing our context and freeing our minds of economic voodoo, we can begin to secure our financial futures. Debt is the most concerning of all economic voodoo you were taught. The Rise of Debt and the Monetary System Debt, the magical fairy dust that makes the world go round. In the land of the free and the home of the indebted, we have built an entire monetary system around the concept of borrowing from our future selves. But fear not, dear citizen, for this system is designed with your best interests in mind. Just ask any of the countless millions of Americans struggling to make ends meet daily. First, let's start with the basics. You want something you can't afford, like a fancy new car or a shiny new home. No problemo. Just borrow some money from a bank or a lender and pay them back with interest over the next few decades. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But if you're lucky, you can take out some additional loans to cover your existing debts. Who needs financial stability when you have a never-ending cycle of debt to keep you afloat? But wait, it gets better. See, the beauty of the monetary system is that it's not just for individuals. Businesses can get in on the action too. Need to expand your company or buy new equipment? Just borrow some money from a bank or a lender and pay them back with interest over the next few decades. Rinse and repeat until you're drowning in debt and praying for a bailout from the government. The rise of debt and the monetary system is a sight to behold. Just remember, when you're struggling to make ends meet, wondering how you'll ever pay off your debts, it's all part of the grand plan. Because in America, nothing says land of opportunity like a mountain of debt you'll be paying off for the rest of your life. 
The debt system is a vicious cycle that plagues the American economy. The government borrows money from private lenders and foreign countries to fund various programs and initiatives. This constant borrowing leads to an ever-increasing national debt, currently at trillions of dollars. The government then pays interest on this debt, which eats up a significant portion of the budget. To keep up with the interest payments, the government is forced to borrow more money, creating a never-ending loop of debt. This endless borrowing and debt system have negative ramifications for the economy. It devalues the US dollar and can lead to inflation, making it harder for ordinary Americans to afford basic necessities. Moreover, the government's inability to pay back the debt means that it will have to cut back on crucial social programs such as education, healthcare, and infrastructure, hurting the ordinary American citizen, worker, and business owners. To make matters worse is not just the government that's on the hook for this debt. The American taxpayer is also suffering. The government's borrowing is financed through the sale of bonds purchased by investors, banks, and foreign governments. The taxpayer pays the interest on these bonds, leading to an increased tax burden on those at the bottom of the earning scale, who can least afford it. This system benefits only the wealthy who can afford to invest in bonds and profits from the interest payments, leaving the rest of the country to suffer from the endless loop of borrowing and debt. How the monetary system actually works at the beginning of this video, we described the money system as a giant octopus with many parts than the average American thinks they can't wrap their brains around the inner working. This is by design. The system is so complex that we leave it to the supposed experts, but you, my friend, are more capable of understanding it all if it's explained in plain American English. Now, before you roll your eyes and fall into a financial coma, Hear me out. This stuff is actually pretty fascinating. It's like a giant puzzle that we're all part of, whether we realize it or not. So let's break it down. At the top of the entire economic food chain, you've got the Federal Reserve, the Fed. These guys are like the wise elders of finance, controlling the money supply and setting up interest rates to keep the economy from going off the rails. Then you've got the banks who are like the Fed's kids, constantly trying to keep in line. They borrow money from the Fed, lend it to the people and businesses, and profit from the interest they charge. But here is where things get tricky. See, the bank aren't just lending out money they have in their vaults, they're creating money out of thin air. Yep, you heard that right. When you take out a loan from the bank, the bank isn't giving you money that someone else deposited. They're typing numbers into a computer and magically creating new money they can lend to someone else. Picture this. The monetary system is like a big magic show. And just like a magic show, there are some tricks that the bankers and financial elite don't want you to know about. One of these tricks is fractional banking. It's how they steal money from the ordinary person and put it in the pocket of the rich. Fractional banking works like this. Banks are allowed to loan out more money than they actually have on hand, thanks to the reserve requirements set by the government. For example, if a bank has $100 in deposit, they can loan out $900 to other people, creating money out of thin air. The problem is that when all those loans come due, the bank may need more cash to repay them, and if enough people default on their loans, the whole system collapses. But the bankers have a solution. They can get a bailout from the government. And who pays for the bailout? You guessed it, the ordinary person, through taxes and inflation. Meanwhile, the bankers keep their profits and bonuses and the rich get richer while the rest of us struggle to make ends meet. It's time to pull back the hidden curtain and see the monetary system for what it is, a rigged game that benefits the few at the expense of the many. It's like a never-ending game of financial hot potato. And where do we the average Joes and Janes fit in all of this? We're talking about those loans and paying back that interest, which keeps the cycle going. So if you're feeling that you're always stuck in a financial rut, remember, you're a tiny player in a huge system that's designed to keep you there. 
But the good news is that the knowledge is power, and by understanding how the monetary system works, you can start making more informed financial decisions and control your financial future. Money versus Currency – True Wealth This video has established that money and currency are not the same thing, and that true wealth is what you need, not currency. Currency is simply a tool for exchanging goods and services, while money represents true wealth, time, and freedom. Unfortunately, we have been brainwashed into thinking that we are too dumb to understand money and that our only path to success is to work ourselves to death in corporate jobs or to trade our greatest assets, time and freedom for a mere paycheck. This narrative benefits the upper class, governments, business owners, and private citizens who control the monetary systems. They want us to believe that we need them to survive and that we must constantly chase after more currency, possessions, and debt to succeed. But the truth is that ordinary Americans can begin to regain their time and freedom by understanding money and wealth. They can start by breaking free from the endless cycle of debt by educating themselves about the tricks of financial banking and how it steals money from the ordinary person and puts it into the pocket of the rich. By understanding the true value of money, we can begin to use currency as a tool to achieve our goals rather than being slaves to it. We can make smarter financial decisions, invest in ourselves and our futures, and build true wealth that cannot be taken away by economic crisis or market crashes. It's time to take back complete control of our financial futures and start living the life we truly deserve, one where time and freedom are our greatest assets and currency is simply a means to an end.